Tape recorded UFO Information Service. Ten years ago, on June 24th, 1947, there began one of the strangest sagas of human history. On that day, Kenneth Arnold was flying his plane in the vicinity of Mount Rainier, Washington, when he caught sight of nine mystery craft sweeping the sky ahead of him. Their speed was unearthly, and their skipping action at once registered to him flying saucers. The name stuck. He later said, I definitely did have an eerie feeling about the whole experience. That was the beginning of saucer sightings all over the world. They have been with us ever since. Aptly enough, the last ten years have been called the haunted decade. Few realize the extent of interest in the subject. Flying saucer research groups now encircle the globe, even to Japan, Austria, Iceland. Many observers feel we are as far from a solution of the enigma as ever. It has been estimated there are now 15,000 flying saucer research groups at work on this mystery. Caught by the sheer lure of it, they work without pay. It is documented history that flying saucers have haunted our skies far back through the past, but sightings were often many years apart. The fact that the present saucer activity came so soon after the beginning of our atomic age convinces researchers that there is a connection between the two history-making, history-shaking events. The theory is that when man split the atom, nature's building block, he invited trouble with which he could not cope, as our present radiation and our peacetime waste dilemma fully proves. Flying saucers are regarded as some omen to humanity. Most researchers feel that splitting the atom for any purpose is against nature's law. They are expecting the discovery of an entirely new source of power, not yet understood, but dramatically exhibited by the fantastic speed and gyrations seen in our skies since 1947. There is talk about the night side of nature, the Earth's magnetism, and the manipulation of it in connection with positive forces in space, and riding the lines of force. Saucers exhibit such manipulation when they hover, dash off at fantastic speeds, make abrupt stops, or make hairpin turns. Engineers in particular have been quietly haunting saucer meetings. It is well known that scores of great corporations researching in aerodynamics are frantically stalking this mystery power, which for want of a better term is often called anti-gravity. Such work is highly secret. There is a race on of unprecedented proportions to snatch nature's secret of free energy. More is already known than the public ever dreams. The big saucer pushes on. Researchers are on the march. Lecturers are beginning to fly the airways from city to city. The Saucer Age celebrates its 10th anniversary with a flying saucer magazine on the newsstands. In South Africa last fall, there was a flying saucer exhibit or convention at which 15,000 were expected. 160,000 came. The state of Michigan is now federated with over a dozen clubs and it's holding a convention in Detroit the end of this month. Melbourne, Australia has a big club and goes on TV. Giant Rock, Yucca Valley, California, has just held its fourth annual Flying Saucer Convention, attended by thousands. Two radio stations, one on our east coast and one on the west coast, keep the high watch by broadcasting nightly from midnight to dawn, mostly about saucers. In the last ten years, hundreds of flying saucer books have come out and dozens more are always on the way. Flying saucer bulletins are now published all over the world. The little listing post at Washington, D.C. has received as many as four from different countries in one day. The world's summation may be news to the man in the street due to a timid press, which for one thing is harked back to the Orson Welles, Men from Mars fiasco. However, Foremost investigators are emphatic in the belief that the saucers are here only for humanity's benefit. They have not yet, to our knowledge, harmed us. Henry J. Taylor, well-known writer and broadcaster, recently appointed ambassador to Switzerland, has just recently told the Senate hearing not to laugh off flying saucers. Three investigating groups of a national or international order have, within the last few months, set up headquarters at the nation's capital. The National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, NICAP, holds forth at 1536 Connecticut Avenue Northwest. Headed by Major Donald E. Kehoe, erstwhile aide to Colonel Lindbergh, 
Nationally known figures are on their board of governors. Their first publication is just off the press. Physical Sciences Investigation, PSI, is headed by professional astronomer Dr. Morris K. Jessup, well-known author of many UFO books. His headquarters are at 407 International Building. He is also an explorer of note and is currently investigating the strange craters of Mexico because of their similarity to those on the moon. The purpose of PSI is to integrate known facts of physical science with the new fields that we are getting into through UFOs and metaphysics to bridge this mystery-strewn gap. The third organization is the Junior Skywatch of the Americas. It reminds the youth the sky is our new frontier. It will promote every kind of sky scouting, the study of unidentified flying objects, meteorology, satellite watching, study of the new attempt at weather control, the work of radio hams, and the sleuthing of saucers via radio. Posts are beginning to form in various cities. What this latter group can do to circumvent delinquency needs no comment. A fourth group, which has just organized at the nation's capital, is the Cosmic Circles of Fellowship, headed by William Ferguson, 1400 Massachusetts Avenue, Northwest. It approaches the subject from the standpoint of the new ethics of space. Millions of people throughout the world are clamoring for their governments to open their files and release full information for the public. They feel that in this, the world's last hour of choice, here is the shortcut to world understanding and to a true way of life. A new slogan is being seen on mail from abroad, and it says, Be active today or radioactive tomorrow. Since the recent congressional hearings on radiation and waste, the demand is being intensified for an open hearing to uncover the facts of the apparently related subject of UFOs. This has been a presentation of tape-recorded UFO Information Service.